Let's start this month off with a movie that I barely knew existed until the day I watched it. I'm of course talking about the new Richard Linklater film on Netflix, Apollo 10 and a Half, A Space Age Adventure. My knowledge of Richard Linklater is limited, I've seen Dazed and Confused, and I like that movie quite a bit. He also did movies like Boyhood and Scanner Darkly, which I have yet to see. This new movie follows the adventures of a young boy sent out on a secret space mission in the 60s. Well, sort of. Kind of. What the majority of the film actually is, is a biographical look at the life of a kid growing up in the 60s, something that feels extremely personal to the director, who very clearly grew up in the 60s himself. The movie is animated via rotoscoping, much like Scanner Darkly. It's a decision that I'm not sure was entirely necessary, but also something I don't mind, as it gives it a much more unique style. And I'm afraid to say that if it wasn't animated, I may have just missed out on the movie entirely. The film itself is pretty laid back. It's much more a fascinating look at history than anything else. Most of it focuses on the space race, which, as you probably imagine, was a big deal at the time. But it doesn't just focus on politics or world events. The film also occasionally talks about the various media the main character consumed, whether it be music, film, or TV. Lots of TV. It's also nice to see a film mention a movie or show that no other film would bother bringing up. I got a lot of good movie and TV recommendations out of this film. As mentioned before, the film feels very personal to Linklater's experiences. It really is like reading someone's diary. I quite enjoyed this film. The plot of a kid going to space didn't exactly excite me, so I was glad to see that this was an entirely different kind of movie. I give this a thumbs up if you want a very enjoyable, personal, and somewhat laid back film, then I think you'll enjoy this one. The next movie I watched was Everything Everywhere All at Once. The new A24 film from the creative team of The Daniels, the same guys who gave us Swiss Army Man. This is going to be a difficult movie to talk about because, for one, it's a sensory overload jam-packed with the most stuff you could possibly fit into a movie. And two, it's already being called one of the greatest films of all time. It might be too soon to tell, but I do know this is an excellent movie and one of the best theater experiences. I've had in years. Multiverses seem to have become the new trend in Hollywood, mainly with comic book movies, but this is perhaps the most creative use of the concept I've ever seen. Spider-Verse being Spider-Verse comes close though. The movie is for the most part an absurdist comedy that manages to be hilarious, but is also extremely heartfelt and just overall a beautiful experience where the drama aspects blend in well with the comedy. The entire cast is great, and just saying that feels like an insane understatement. I think we're all in agreement that Ki Hei Kwan was the biggest surprise. To my understanding, he quit acting after the 80s, and he brings such a fun energy here, and is given a good chance to show off his range as an actor. The creativity in this film is endless. I kept wondering just how much time and effort went into the creation of it. It is definitely one of those films I would love to learn more about the making of. The purpose of a theater is to watch films that make us laugh, cry, or just to have an overall good time and this movie succeeds at all of that. This is the movie Nicole Kidman should be watching in the AMC theaters ad, specifically the butt plug scene. Only time will tell if this movie lives on to become a masterpiece, but I think it has a good chance. It's my favorite film of the year so far, and a definite thumbs up. See it on the big screen if you can, I rarely say that with movies. The next movie I watched was the new animated DreamWorks film, The Bad Guys. This film is based on a series of children's books that I have never read. The first thing I will say about this movie is that it looks beautiful. Love the combination of 2D and 3D that's become more prevalent in recent years. It looks super nice. There's great character designs and the Lupin the Third influence is clear as day. Borderline plagiarism. But if it gets more people to watch Lupin then that's cool. Obviously furries go nuts over this, specifically Mr. Wolf, but with some other characters as well. And as I said, the characters really were the highlight of the film. The biggest hindrance here is that this movie is very aware it's a kid's movie. Which isn't a bad thing, I mean there's lots of great animated kid's movies, but the plot just plays it so safe. 
It feels beat for beat like a lot of kids' movies I've seen before. Nothing besides the animation impressed me. The animators really did carry this whole film on their back. For that reason, this leans more towards a meh for me, but looking at it as a film for young children, it's perfectly fine. I think its target audience will love it, so in that sense, I'll give it a thumbs up for kids. Uh, just a low thumbs up. The thumbs up system is stupid and doesn't mean anything, okay? Up next we have the new Robert Eggers movie, The Northman. This one's about Vikings. This is also the reason the video's kinda late, that and I'm working on like three other videos at the moment that are all very long. So this is a movie I keep seeing described as epic, savage, and ferocious, which is dumb because you could really say those things about any Viking movie. But what this is is a grand fantasy tale that feels pretty grounded in its approach to depicting Vikings, while not being afraid to tap into some more surreal fantasy territory. There's a few moments in this movie where it's ambiguous as to what's real and what's not, kind of in a similar way to The Green Knight, although I think I like that movie more. This movie is pretty much Viking Hamlet. There's a few changes here and there that keep you invested, but for the most part, it's the style rather than the story that makes this film work so well. Robert Eggers has only done horror in the past, so it's nice to see him step outside of that. I like that he's stuck to period piece movies and seems to plan to continue doing that in the future. The actors all do a terrific job here, the film looks beautiful, there's plenty of scenes with a dreamlike essence that made this the perfect movie to watch late at night. Do I like this movie as much as The Witch or The Lighthouse? No, but I think only time will tell if that changes. I recall liking The Lighthouse a lot more on a rewatch. But I was, overall, extremely satisfied with this film. I think if you're either a history buff or someone who enjoyed Robert Eggers' other films, you'll get a lot of enjoyment out of it. I give this one a thumbs up.